Hi, Alex Lamy here, and today I'm really excited to show you a piece of music that I've written using a new library from Orchestral Tools, Berlin Consordino Strings. As you'd expect, given the other libraries from the Berlin series, there's an extensive array of articulations in this one. So let's play the track, and then afterwards we can start to have a look at what's going on. Right, where to start? You've got all the articulations you'd expect for a muted strings library. Legatos, sustains, expressive bowing, portatos, tremolos, staccato, and so on. But there are a few extra things in this collection too, and I wanted to put a track together that really explored some of these. You've got some playable runs, soft rips, arpeggios, sustain colenio, which is bowing the strings with the wooden back of the bow instead of the hair, and you've also got some of these fifth drops patches that users of the Time Micro and Time Macro collections might be familiar with. Now, it's not been too long since I put together a walkthrough on those libraries, so it's probably not surprising that I ended up starting the track off with the texture made up of some chords using the first violin's fifth drops patch. I've also combined them with a similar violin articulation, the rips down patch, which has the same sort of movement but without the definition at the end of the note. They're an octave lower than the fifth drops, so they stack up in a really interesting way, and because of the extra fifths and the randomness involved, the chords that are made have something really quite haunting and beautiful about them. What's cool here is that even though these are chords of about five or six notes, they don't end up sounding like a massive, unrealistic section. The section sizes for this library are quite small, like the main Berlin Strings collection. Six verse violins, six seconds, six violas, six celli, and three basses. This means that even when you stack up the voices, like maybe here where you could say there are about 30 odd players, it's still a manageable and detailed sound. Similarly, talking about stacking voices up or doubling, the next thing in here is a really high melody which is harmonics played by the second violins, but I've doubled it very quietly with the legato from the same section, which is about as high as that patch goes. And it plays once like that, then it's joined by the first violins playing legato as well, two octaves below, which gets down as low as they go. And then the violas are providing some harmony and some movement in between. Have a listen. Thank you. 
two more things to hear in this opening, from the celli and the basses. Orchestral tools have sampled something really cool here. I'm certain I've not seen it anywhere else. These articulations called hotel mutes. Now, as the name suggests, they're the sort of mute that you put on while practicing in a hotel room so that you don't annoy your neighbours. They really dampen the strings so that the sound produced becomes extremely quiet without any sort of resonance. And sampled in sections like this, they're a real special effect. There are fast tremolo, slow irregular tremolo and sustains patches for every section apart from the basses. I've used these a couple of times, but the intro here has the celli fast trems in use, coming up from nothing and joining the violins on the melody. And lastly, still staying with this haunting ethereal feeling, I'm using the basis sustain colenio patch, which is naturally very quiet, but when turned up, it's amazingly rich and deep. In the next section I wanted something with some real impact to come in and to get a bit of momentum going that's been started by the rhythmic stuff in the violins beforehand. So I'm using a lot more of the short notes here, including the playable runs legato patches on the celli, the violas and the second violins. They have these rushing sextuplet figures, while the first violins have spiccato chords on the crotchets of every bar. Crotchets are quarter notes to anyone over the pond. <laughs> the basses come in at the end there too, as well as the playable runs from the violins again. Now whenever I used the playable runs, I doubled them with the spiccato patches to get a bit of definition and bite, and I've done something similar with the legato lines playing here too, doubling the shorter, faster parts of the melody with the staccato articulation in the first violins, which is not really exactly audible, but it just helps make sure those notes don't get lost in the whole texture. The violins were all using the legato articulation there, with the celli using the expressive sustains and the basses using the sustains and portato short articulations. The only thing missing from that section was the percussion that I've put in. I just felt like those two four bars needed a bit of punctuation, so there's some deep bass drums from Berlin Percussion, the big percussion hits from Metropolis Arc 1 and the timpani ensemble from Metropolis Arc 3. I'll give you a quick blast of those with everything else turned down for context. I think the next section here is my favourite, even though it's very short, as we're using a real mix of articulations across the string section here. I'll break it down into two examples, the first using the more regular techniques, the violin's two non-vibrato sustains and the long swells from the second violins and the celli. The chords are quite simple, but the sound is really beautiful, exactly what you want when you think of muted strings. The other half of this is using the tremolo harmonics from the first violins, the hotel mute sustains from the violas and the basses soft sustains playing their expressive samples, but we also have the violins to fifth drops patch again in use too. The articulation is the same as the first violins, but it differs ever so slightly. It's played just a little bit slower, it's a bit softer, maybe a little bit further back too, which is a really nice contrast, but I also picked it here because if you play a pattern at the right speed, those drops become quite rhythmic and almost fool you into hearing triplets at this new tempo. Have a listen to those in along with the other long articulations. The final section of this piece is really the musical payoff that we've been waiting for. 
the melody from before soars now, and there are these really lush chords in the violas using the expressive sustains, and rich basses and octaves again using the portato samples. And all the legato patches in use have the CC3 all the way up using the expressive sustain samples. Let's solo the violas, celli and basses and really hear how good those expressive sustains are. There is a bit more in this end section, the melody in the two violin sections and the staccato chords that are poking through, but you can hear those well enough in the main track playthrough. So instead of playing those in isolation, I wanted to highlight something else I'd done in regards to the mixing and the mic positions in this library. One of the cool things about the sign player is that you can click on the mic remote for any number of the patches loaded into an instance and control the mic positions for every articulation together. Now this means that you can quickly get the mix that you want in the player itself. But, as I was writing, I started to think one step further. I had the idea that I wanted the intro to sound much more distant and make more use of the surround microphones, and that it would also be nice to pull up the leader mic positions at times, especially during the softer staccato moments. And I thought a very easy way of controlling all of that would be to group everything onto a VCA fader for all mic positions, the same way that you might have your mic groups on the mixing desk when recording a string section. Now, at first I thought, I'm probably overcomplicating things here, but actually, Sign Player makes this very easy in the end. I click on the mic remote button, and then I can click on each mic position and assign it to a different output in every instance of sign. For example, 3, 4 for the leader, 5, 6 for the tree, and then once each of these is activated in Cubase, I can group them all onto a VCA fader for each, and then I can pull up each mic position on a fader as needed across the whole string section. Now that means I can automate all of my faders to do all of those ideas I just mentioned, but a really cool byproduct of all of this is that I can easily show you the difference between the mic positions here, with the whole musical example playing with all of the string section and not just one section at a time. So I'm going to play the last section again and go through the different mics as I go, which should give you a good idea about what they all really sound like. Well, that's about all I could string together for this one. I hope the strings have been the only thing muted here and that you haven't muted me along the way. I do hope you've enjoyed this and found something useful and got a good idea of what the Berlin Consolino Strings Library has to offer. If you do have any questions, drop them in the comments, we'll get back to you. And don't forget, there will be other videos and audio demos over on the Orchestral Tools website to check out as well. The library is available to download now on the Sign Player. I've had loads of fun with it and I really hope you do too. See you on the next one.